morning, everybody. Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. Coming at you with something totally different and spur of the moment and off the wall and meant to hopefully help me keep my sanity. <laughs> Hold on, I have threads going every place and pattern pages going other places and okay, that's the one I'm working with. So, where to start? Um, why are we here today? Let's start there. So if you've been visiting with me for any length of time over the past few months, you know that we are once again in the process of moving, of relocating to San Antonio, Texas, from Hawaii. And our move is basically done by the federal government. Mike works for the Department of Defense. And that means everything is at the mercy and at the um, schedule of the federal government, of his agency. So it's a process that, that takes time and you go into that knowing that. His process, both coming out here and this time, have been even longer because in both places he curtailed his um, regular scheduled posting. The one in Maryland, it was only curtailed by, I don't know, half a year or something. This one, we were supposed to be here three years we've decided after a year that we need to be back on the mainland for various reasons. We started this process in mid-December. We thought it would go faster than the process coming out here, mostly because Mike learned from experience that you have to keep on top of people and you have to keep bugging them in order to make sure that things are getting done. It took so he, he needs a special form, an SPF, um, for both the gaining organization and the losing organization to sign, saying that they agree to this curtailment. Coming out here, that form got lost in three different email queues, delaying us from the normal process, the normal length of time, by at least a month. We thought, this time, that it would go quicker Again, because Mike would keep on top of people and not let it get lost. And for the most part, that has worked. It didn't get lost. It get, did get lost in an email queue for one week because a person was on um, sick leave, extended sick leave, and um, no one knew that. <laughs> but luckily, Mike banged some doors and rattled some chains and found that out and got the process moving again. But now we are stuck in a HR controlled cycle system. I don't know what to call it. HR got the nomination, everything had been signed and HR got the nomination statement two weeks ago Friday. The nomination statement comes whenever the SPF is all finalized and yes, we agree that he can do this curtailment, he can move. That's when the actual PCS processing starts, is supposed to start. Unfortunately, <sighs> I'm just so frustrated by all of this. Unfortunately, The HR department out here got that nomination statement, but they also needed this wonderful SPF that has been floating around, and they did not get that. Now, this is coming from the HR department back at headquarters at Fort Meade. You know, you would think this isn't their first rodeo. You would think that Mike isn't the first person to curtail. You would think that everybody knows what goes into these packages. You would think that there would be one 
effing database where all this information is kept that HR across the different offices across this agency would just be able to access it and download it and put it in the package. But no. Mike has sent three emails to the HR department back in Maryland. Mike has called several times. The last email that he sent, oh, and the, the HR department here has emailed. The last email that Mike sent back, he got a canned response back saying, oh, we've implemented a new system, a new team building system, in that when your emails come in, they are going to this email alias so that our team, our whole team will have access, so nothing will get lost. And we don't have to worry about emails getting lost in a queue and sitting there if somebody happens to be on leave, which sounds like a brilliant idea, right? But then it says, your email will be answered within five business days. Really? You have a team now to make sure this doesn't get lost, but it's still going to take you five business days to answer? Which means we've lost another week if it takes that long. So yesterday, Mike talked to his chief of staff who was going to talk to the um, deputy, of Dir deputy director of operations here who would talk to the director of HR here and start getting just, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, basically. But in the midst of all this, we've just been getting so frustrated. Mike's, Mike's like I've mentioned before, Mike is having an awful time with the new manager. He's gone in the past three weeks to, as much as he knew he was ready to get off this island, move to the mainland, get back into our RV, be able to do all the stuff that we love. He was going to miss the job because he really has been enjoying the job and the people he works with. This new manager has come on board and he's to the point now that just get me the F off this island. Get me out of here. It, it's bad. Basically, the guy that they put in charge when his previous boss retired has no management experience. And whenever you have no management experience, you should be starting your first management job, you know, with a team of five to seven people. Instead, this guy gets put in place of a fairly important organization with 80 to 90 people. So, Mike's hoping he can learn. Mike will be sitting down with him on Friday to help give him some clues about how to manage. <laughs> but anyway, so why am I here? Like I said, I've been in a funk all week. Couldn't do a Floss 2 video on Tuesday because I was just... I was in no mood. I, I could not come and talk to you like everything was okay when all I really want to do is swear up a blue storm and throw things. <laughs> so, I made a kind of haphazard comment on my Facebook group last night. Maybe I should just, from now until the orders are issued, maybe I should just start a new project every day. Maybe that will make me feel better. And of course, my loving friends, all of you wonderful people that answered said, yeah, that's a great idea. That'll definitely make you feel better. Well, Murphy's Law says that, you know, you'll get everything all organized and then you'll get the orders. So here I am. <laughs> Guess what I'm doing? Every day until we get the orders, I will be starting something new. Now, this obviously doesn't look like I just started it, right? That's because I didn't. It is new to me, but it is not newly started. So this is the Dorothy Allen sampler. It is um, a sampler reproduced by R&R &R Reproductions. You can see 1994, so it is an older one. They do still have this. Dying to Stitch still does carry this if you would like a sweet little sampler. It is stitched on 35 count linen. You can see this is as wide as it's going to be. H is the end here. 
Okay, so it, it is just a tiny little thing stitched in silks. This was actually a kit that R and R Reproductions put together for one of the, from what I understand, if I'm remembering correctly, one of their first classes that they taught. The way, the way I came to to have this um, is from various people. I first got the piece of linen in a gift package of a bunch of pieces of fabric. I got the piece of linen with this started. And the person had told me that this was the Dorothy Allen sampler, but she no longer had the chart. <clears throat> um, so I, f I found out that it was from r and Reproductions, and I talked to um, Anne at Dying to Stitch and found out they did still have it in print. So I bought one from them, a copy of the, the chart. But then a kind viewer um, had the chart with the rest of the silk that she had not used. There's a lot of silk still left. So she sent me that. So I am able then to finish because one of my concerns is it was started, of course, in the colors. I didn't know whether I would be able to find the same colors, if the dye lots would have changed, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so one of my viewers did send me the, the silks to finish it. So hopefully I will have enough. Um, it certainly looks like there's plenty left of all of the colors that I shouldn't have a problem. This top band is done in, what is it called? Long-armed cross stitch? Long-armed cross? Yeah, long-armed cross. So it's kind of a, a puffier, puffier elongated cross stitch where you kind of go, so the first leg and this particular version, some of them are done, like there's separators for the other lines of the alphabet of long arm cross as well, and they are done over two of the linen threads. This one is actually done over three vertical threads. So two across and three up. So the first leg is this one here, the left leaning one. So it goes from the bottom left, or I'm sorry, the bottom right up to the top left over three. Then you come straight down three and then again over two but i'm doing i'm skipping actually four here because this is the bottom you know if i did just two i'd be going in the same hole here so i skip another two and come over here and do that next leg and yes i am stitching in hand sewing method as usual so because this is rather haphazard like just out of the blue last night I have nothing planned. I decided to start this one. This one, I've, I've had this linen sitting in my, my stash with all my other linen ever since I got it. And every time I go through my linen looking for a piece for something else, I see this and think, you know, I really need to pull that out and do something with it. I really need to pull that out and do something with it. So I decided this would be a perfect time to pull it out and do something with it because it's already started. I already have the floss and the linen. I don't have to do any planning. Um, so this would be a good one to start with. And like I said, even though it's already started, it is new to me. And because it is so small, there's a chance I might get it done sometime in the near future. <laughs> I don't know how many, of course, I'm going to be starting. Um, it will at least be a week before he gets his order. So what happens is, what's supposed to happen is, HR here gets the nomination statement. And then a, process, a series of um, appointments are made for Mike to have a medical checkup, possibly a polygraph. Polygraphs get done every five years and he's still within that five year mark. So I don't know whether they'll do the polygraph or not, but there's various appointments like that. He sits down with the PCS officer and goes over everything that's involved with the PCS, money and timing, and they work up the date for when he's going to start his new job. 
and then everything gets scheduled out backed up from that and that will take at least a week so say by some miracle the HR department here gets that SPF and they can start making the appointments today it's not going to happen today nothing's happening today Mike Mike leaves at noon for a morale building con morale building afternoon with his with his team with his office which means he they're going to someplace over on Schofield and having a picnic basically <laughs> um, so just by some miracle if things did start meeting started or the appointment started happening maybe tomorrow maybe next week it would still be probably all of next week before the orders would get written and the orders, getting the orders all written up on, is only going to take a day. Um, so I expect I'll be at this for a week, at least. I will not be doing anything on Saturday or Sunday because those aren't work days. So I know that the orders aren't getting written on Saturday or Sunday. So we're going to take those days off from the madness <laughs> and work on other madness. And I'm only going to work on these like maybe a couple hours on the day I start. I'm not necessarily add, adding anything to my current queue um, because I have enough in my current queue. <laughs> I actually got out my Santa Fe decor piece mm, the night before last, Tuesday night, because I was so disgusted and I wanted to work on just something that I hadn't in a while that was calling to me. So I worked on that for the evening, and it was pretty much all confetti, so I only got like a hundred some stitches done. <laughs> it was frustrating. <laughs> Just what I needed. Okay, let me see how I end this, because then there's something else funky on the end of this to, to bring it out the same length as this line. Okay. So how do I end it, though? You know, that's always the question I have with specialty stitches. They show you how to start, but they don't necessarily show you how to end. All right. And my conundrum is this next stitch would be the one that goes over here. I'd be going down two out from this last stitch. But um, what I'm supposed to be doing in line with the H is a vertical stitch here. So I think I'm just going to do this. And then I do that. So this sampler was done. The It's not your typical, it's not your typical um, sampler done by like a, you know, a 10 year old girl whatever this this woman was 24 years old when she did it um hold on looking again right, that is in one um but there are the kind of the same sort of mistakes as you know when anybody's learning to stitch stuff happens you figure it out for in instance you look at the bee and they charted this exactly how the original sampler was. And this sampler is held in the um, collection at the Bennington Museum in Vermont. Um, so you could actually go and see the original there. But she did not have that lower thing on the B. She didn't have the bottom stitch on the K. There are a few other places where there's like just kind of random straight stitches that they've charted in. And so one of those places is this at the end of this top line, just kind of this, these two lines sticking out here. And so that's how they charted it. So that's what we're stitching. And those lines are over five. Just straight lines, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so. That's pretty. The silk is a Verasois. So 
So it's a very, you know, it's like the, I think I said in my silk video, it is the kind of the queen of silk for stitching. The, um, the next thing I'm going to work on, she has these, this is a, called hair, a herringbone stitch, this vertical line here. So I'm going to work on that next. And then I might work this cross stitch down here, kind of get that in place. Like I said, I'm going to work on this a couple, couple hours. This one might, might stay in my rotation because it would be kind of fun to get this done. Such a sweet little stitch. This is actually finished off with a hem stitch and then just mounted on linen in a frame. I really like that simple look. So anyway, I do not have planned exactly what I'm going to be doing as far as, you know, what all I'm going to work on. But I ha did go through my stash and pulled out a bunch that kind of caught my eye as possibilities. So the ones that like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Who knows how many of these that I will get through. I'm going to each day, um, I'm not gonna get all these ready. Like once I finish my another hour on this, eh, yeah, give or take, um, I'll get the next one for tomorrow ready but I'm not going to like get a whole bunch ready because I just don't know how long. Each, after, each day, I'll get the next day's ready. I don't know at any given time which one I'm going to do. I know which ones are a higher priority that I'd like to get started. So I'll have those earlier on and then we'll see. But anyway, I am pretty sure tomorrow I'm going to start this one. This is On the Road to India. I think that's what that says. Sola Rata de Inde, something like that. Mahatma Gandhi. This phrase here is um, what Gandhi said on his salt march, and it means one step at a time is enough for me. So, you know how I love all things India. I am going to use this silk. This is a filament silk that... Um, a dear friend gave to me. I don't know whether she wants me to say, so I'm not going to. I don't have fabric picked for this yet. It calls for, uh, let's see. She did it in Edinburgh. She did it on a 36 count. So um, I am probably going to do it over one on something. I'll have to see if this seems to be thicker or thinner than DMC, if over one will work. But anyway, I just have to go through my stash and find fabric for that. But that's the one I plan on starting for tomorrow. So let's see what else I've pulled out. This one seemed very appropriate for what Mike and I are going through. Silver Creek samplers through the storms. No relationship is all sunshine, but two people can share one umbrella and walk through the storms together. So this is a definite must start while this is going on because that's like super appropriate. And there's me and Mike <laughs> under our umbrella. <laughs> this is another must start. I showed you this you this guy, ha, huh. I showed this to you guys not too long ago. I saw this just random um, on the Silver Needle website and um, just fell in love with what it's showing here. Seasonal sunshine, sun sign. So this is basically the, um, the travel of the sun through its different seasons. And so each one of the blocks represents the different seasons. This represents where the sun is in the solstice and how it's, you know, less or more depending on which season, kind of equal in um, summer and fall. Or maybe it's fall and summer. <laughs> I don't know. That's definitely winter. So I love this. I'm 
excited to start it. This I will be stitching over one on probably, well, I have to see what I have in there, but definitely that's going to be an over one stitch. This is another one I definitely want to get started. I would love to get this done. This is the one I just got recently, the Arm Keep from Heartstring Samplery. So, um, yeah, this will probably stay in my rotation as well so that I can start using it here on my recliner. This will also get packed with me to take with me in the RV in San Antonio because this will be perfect on my recliner in the RV. Winter Time by Hands On Design. This is such a sweet piece. I love the colors. I love the finishing. This isn't as, as um, high up on my list, but it's, it caught my eye, so it came out. Promise of Spring. Hope. Again, I pulled this because this is, um, yeah, representing where we are right now. Looking forward to the promise of spring in San Antonio. We have hope that it's going to happen soon. I will be stitching this over one as well. I want to do this whole series over one. I don't know if I have the fabric that will work right for it, but we shall see. Again, 28 or 25 count. This one, begin row. A journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. Yep, we're ready. We're ready to make that journey. So, this will get started. The model was stitched on 30 count Confederate gray. We'll see what we have. I'm sure I have a 32 count in there that will work. This one, I'm not too sure if I'll start it or not. Another Bent Creek, we welcome you kindly. I love the thought of having something like this um, big. And this one, I think, was stitched on a 25 count. Yeah, over two. So that was a fairly good size. Um, but I want to do this big and like mount it on a wreath for on my door in San Antonio. But that's not a, one of my primary ones. Mini Quaker Stitches. I was supposed to start this as a stitch along with Sumarelli, I think. Sue, is that right? Um, yeah, last autumn, I think. We never did. <laughs> so maybe I'll get it started this week. This should be a quick one, right? Very pretty. And, of course, Jeanette Douglas. Love, 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 love. The sample's on a 32 count. I'll probably try and find a 36 count. So pretty. All right, this one is a total whim. <laughs> I've had this in my stash for ages. This is called um, A Bell Pull for All Seasons. It's by Nancy Ross, Rossi. It's from the Needle Worker magazine, autumn of 1997. So pretty. I would love to get this done someday before I die. <laughs> Again, I'm going to see if I have a 36 count, maybe even a 42 count, or 42, 40 count. The sample is done on a 32 count, and it's 10 by 31 finished in the, in the bell pull. I'd like to have it a little smaller. So, we'll see. I would love to get that started, though. And it just charted in DNC. Nothing fancy here. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I will always be a wildflower. This seems appropriate for moving to San Antonio. I hope we get there in time to see the wildflowers blooming, the blue bonnets blooming in the spring. Down in the hill country, right? I am ready. This has little buttons on it. Don't know whether I'll still be able to get the buttons, but that's okay. I can do it without. So this is a Sam Sarah Studios design. Love it. I may, I may, huh. I probably will change the colors. The colors seem a little dull to me. Um, 
It is charted in Gentle Arts. And the colors just seem kind of, eh, I could brighten them up. In fact, I'm thinking the, the floss that I just got from Victorian Motto might be perfect for this. We shall see. This one I saw at the attic when I was there visiting. It was stitched. I think they, I don't know whether they stitched it over one or stitched it on one of the higher counts, like a 56 count. I will stitch it over one. I would like to get this started. I think this is gorgeous. This is, again, the Scarlet House Center Point Sampler. So pretty. So, in honor of the Southwest, Pueblo Basket Art. This is one that I got um, off the freebie table at StitchCon last year. This is Moss Creek Designs. Lots of interesting stitches here, and I thought this would be a great tribute to move, moving to the Southwest. There's some drawn thread in there, lots of satin stitch. There's even some hard anger. It's kind of like a lizard. Isn't that cool? So, this one just caught my eye. I got this from um, Fiddlesticks 2 here in Honolulu when we first moved here and I visited. Um, it's one of the, the la -di da older charts. Let's see if there's a copyright on it. 2005. But I've just always thought this was so cool. Again, just another little sampler, different than most samplers, which, you know, is what I like. That is stitched on Another 32 count, and it uses um, Gentle Arts threads again. So, and that's what I would use, the Gentle Arts. I love the look of these, these kind of softer colors. I guess I'm not always about bright colors. A lot of times I am, but this, this totally is gorgeous. Oh, and then there's this one. This is the Scarlet Letter Flame Stitch Sampler. Talk about colors. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. And look at that flower band at the bottom. Yeah, this would make me happy to work on this. Like, beyond words happy. Let's see what this is. I think this is charted in... Um, this is from 2001. I think it is charted in both DMC and Avera Swa. I haven't opened it yet, so I don't know what. Oh, sorry, I just bumped you. Um, 35 count linen. So I have to have to see if I have a 36 count that I like having the pale fabric, the lighter fabric. Most of the most of it you don't see the fabric, but up here you certainly do. So I have to see if I have a a 36 count. But yeah. That one would perk me right up. And last but not least, talk about perking me right up. I showed you this not too long ago. Siam Fusion from Sampler Cove. Absolutely amazing. Amazing. This one... I look at it and think, do I want to do it on the dark fabric or don't I? If I do, I'll need to order it. I don't have anything dark this big and in the right count. And there's not enough, you know, there not very many people have done this. In the search that, searches that I've done, I haven't seen it out there. To be able to see other samples, you know, I like to look to see if there's other samples of it done on other colors to see what it looks like, and there just aren't any. I'll go through my stash and see what I have. Let me open it and see what count she did. 
Oh, goodness. She used 32 count Belfast black. Oh, and the thread is um, Karen Collection Swa Cristal. So I will need to substitute in probably Mrs. Satis because you know she has plenty of blues. Oh my God. This is a must start. All right, guys, so that is the, the plan, such as it is, <laughs> for however long. I'm hoping that I don't have time to start all of these. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, and 16 with the India one, <laughs> plus the one today, 17. So that would be another two and a half weeks. No, I don't want to be delayed that long. I do hope to start a chunk of these though, and I hope you'll come along with me for the ride. So I do plan every day, just like I did with Stitch Mania two years ago. Every day, I'm going to do a little video. This one's longer because I showed you everything. But every day I'll do a video showing my new start and we'll chat and um, just see where we are, talk about what I'm doing and talk about what I'm going to do for the next day. So I hope you'll join me in the craziness. Um, wish me luck, whatever that may mean. Um, yeah, and we'll just we'll just see what we get started and what we get done and hopefully it'll help relieve the grumps that I've been feeling for the past few days. Guys, I hope you enjoy this. Um, yeah, we'll see. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.